A week ago, we had big news on a Friday morning. We had Christian McCaffrey getting traded to the 49ers. That was a lot more fun than what we're going to talk about at the start of this show. The big news, of course, being Jamar Chase out, although you probably already heard the bonus podcast. Thanks to Chris and Dave for knocking that out. And, ugh, what a, ugh. I'm not, I was in a bed. I was upset by that game last night. It was upsetting. I don't like watching this caliber of football, uh, especially from legends. And as a guy who defended Tom Brady all week, I don't even know if I should be on the show today. So I'm sorry, <laughs> everyone. It really made me look so bad. But uh, uh, what's up? Good morning, guys. Good, you know what? We're gonna we're gonna spin it positive. Good morning, guys. How are you? Happy Friday. Happy Friday, Adam. I traded for Jamar Chase in a league two weeks ago, and now I'm I, I acquired Jamar Chase and Rashad Bateman. I now have <laughs> nothing to show for for my trade. I got one word for you. After I spent I spent uh, uh, about ninety percent of my remaining fab budget in uh, the guillotine league on Jamar Chase two days ago. Yes, I got a tweet uh, about that. Uh, I'm supposed uh, to uh, hug you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's a bummer. He's out four to six weeks reportedly, and we'll talk about that quickly. We'll, uh, well, not too quickly. Um, we'll talk Baltimore 27, Tampa Bay 22. You did get the quasi garbage time touchdown from Brady to salvage his night a little bit. We'll give you the news and notes. We got beat the waiver. Hey, Dottie should have had one. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yes, he should have. And Mike Evans, of course, should have. Uh, we've got six teams on a bye next week, so you might need to beat the waiver wire. And, of course, we have seven games to talk about today. San Francisco and the Rams, Carolina, Atlanta, Giants, Seahawks, Cardinals, Vikings, Miami at Detroit, Chicago at Dallas, and we missed Tennessee, Houston yesterday, so we will cover that later. Yeah, we really miss it. Nah, they're just Brandon Cooks, basically. But, um, There's three guys. That's it. Yeah, the two of them are easy. Yep. Uh, so, Jamie, we start with this big news here with the Jamar, Hay- Jamar Chase hip injury. He was the number four wide receiver per game and non number five in full PPR. He was coming off two massive games in a row. And you look at his touchdowns, six touchdowns, a couple deep balls, a tw- a one where he had 27 yards after the catch, one where he had 50 yards after the catch. He makes things happen. What do you think about Joe Burrow? Let's start with him. What do you think? What do you, Jamie, you can go then, Dave. Joe Burrow is, is QB blank uh, for the next six weeks. Uh, first off, your sorcery works again with your Joe Mixon usage and wanting to see him get more carries. Congratulations to you for ruining Jamar Chase. Um, uh, Joe Burrow is QB six. Pretty nice situation to lose Jamar Chase and still look across the field and you have T. Higgins and, and Tyler Boyd. Um, so he's he he loses, you know, from QB two, QB three to you know uh, you're not benching Joe Burrow anytime soon. Um, the T Higgins becomes a top 10 receiver. If he wasn't there already, Tyler Boyd becomes a top 20 receiver. If he wasn't trending there already. And the first thing you should do, if you're listening to this is go see if Hayden Hurst is available and go pick him up because there's going to be some potential uptake in targets and, and hopefully production as well. So Joe Mixon, you know, he'll, he'll, the, 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 the splits that you were hoping to see Adam, I'm sure you'll, you'll get back to that, you know, where Zach Taylor leans more on the run. So no concern about only waiting until the fourth quarter to get those nine carries that you were begging for. Uh, no, for the begging record, for. I actually, not, for. I wouldn't exactly say that I was hoping to see them. I, I couldn't care less. I mean, I do have some mixing, but I actually like them when they're th- aggressive, throwing the ball a lot. They're really good. No, 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 that's not what you said yesterday. You said, <laughs> I hate the passing game for the Bengals. I'd like to see this stop in some way, shape, or form, and Joe Mixon get more carries. Uh, but, you know, to say that Joe Burrow's top six, I think it's, maybe an indictment on the quarterback position. I mean, yes. do you think he's just yes. getting, right? Because yes. he can't be as good. Jamar Chase just makes so many plays. It's not a knock on Burrow, but how could you lose Jamar Chase and, and just pick up where you left off, Dave? You can't, but uh, he went into this week tied for fourth on the trade chart. And now I, who would you rather have rest of season Burrow without Chase for the next four weeks or Justin Herbert, who, uh, who knows who, who when knows? he's going to get his receivers back and healthy and at full strength. I think I'd still rather have Joe Burrow. So he's going all the way from tied for fourth to fifth for me <laughs> and still a, a startable fantasy quarterback. Uh, I, I remember what he did in 2020. He played 10 games or so, averaged right around 19 fantasy points per game. He didn't have Chase. He had Higgins. He had Boyd. He was younger then. And uh, I don't know if they the coaching staff trusted him then like they might now. So he could be a little bit better than that. 
but I, I don't expect him to still put up huge fantasy numbers. And I think that goes without saying, I, I disagree a little bit on Higgins. I don't know if he's top 10. I think he's top 12, top 15. So it's just a tiny pushback. I'm good with Boyd as a top 24 receiver. Agree hundred percent on Hayden Hurst. Great guy to add. Finally, another tight end that we could add to the mix. Who's better than just a touchdown or bus guy. Starting him over Kyle Pitts this week. Yep. Yep. He's 64% rostered. The two games where T. Higgins left with an injury, he had 46 yards and he had 53 yards and a touchdown. He had seven to eight targets in both of those games. So you're certainly hoping for more. Uh, more it's not a slam games. dunk that he's going to be great, but at least there's a chance for him to be good. Exactly. So that's what you're making him. <laughs> and how many tight ends are there who are like that? Right. Where they, they've got more than a chance to be a touchdown or bust. Kyle Pitts is a touchdown or bust tight end now. Hayden Hurst is better than that. The only other quarterback I can think of to compare to Burrow, because we're going to take Lamar Jackson, Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts, clearly ahead of him. Herbert, you're saying still Burrow. What about Kyler? For now, behind him. If Mike Williams isn't out ex- for an extended period of time, I take Herbert over, bro. But it's going to be like four weeks. Yeah, well, I mean, we don't know what's going to happen coming off the bye week. So if it's one week and then he's still got a three-week window ahead of Jamar Chase, then I would take Justin Herbert. Well, I'm sorry, Dave. You said behind him. I didn't know what you meant. Who's be- who- Kyler Murray or Joe Burrow rest of season? I've got Burrow right now, but we'll see what happens after this week. All right. You know, okay, Kyler is another good week and scores more touchdowns, and Hopkins is a superstar. Kyler hasn't had a good week in a month. I know. So he's got to come. Th- well, last week was a step in the right direction, if you ask me. For fantasy, it's been a long time since he's been good. But if he if he looks like a quarterback that can get you – 20 to 25 a week, I think I'd probably put him ahead of Burrow. But we'll see. For now, he's not. Okay. We've got a lot of great content coming up this weekend, including fantasy football today, new, uh, noon Easter, Monday through Friday. Sorry. 10 a.m. Easter. Oh, what time are you going on this week? Nine? 9 a.m., baby. London. A.m. Yeah, London, got- baby. Yeah, great. Yeah, Broncos. Yay. So uh, 9 a.m. Eastern, CBS Sports HQ. You can watch that on the CBS Sports app on any connected device or on your phone. Uh, and, yeah, that's uh, nine a, usually 10 a.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Eastern, though, this Sunday. So check that out. We have a live stream at 1130 a.m. Eastern on YouTube if you want to ask your questions there, youtube.com slash today. We have a nice crowd. We have a lot of fun on Sunday morning. So come hang out with us there, youtube.com slash today. And yeah, there's a, there's other stuff. Of course, we have the mailbag, and yeah, download the CBS Sports app for all our awesome content there as well. Um, my wife texted me a joke from Instagram this morning from someone named Selena on Instagram, and I thought maybe I'd tell you a joke because f- fantasy football can be so depressing. So, what? well, I mean, I was I was very upset by last night's game. I really was. Obviously. All the injuries. Holy cow! But here's the joke. What do you call a beach that keeps losing its sand? A shore loser. <laughs> yeah, okay. So here's Bucks and Ravens. Yeah, that just made me forget about all my fantasy football problems. Thank you. <laughs> the Ravens had the ball for 38 minutes and 23 seconds. Tampa Bay barely had the ball. 21 minutes, 37 seconds. Updates on the injuries. Mark Andrews, shoulder. Gus Edwards hamstring. They're sort of downplaying them right now. Um, they've got the Saints next week, then a bye. We'll see what happens. Uh, Shaq Barrett, though, not downplaying that. Linebacker for the Bucks. Great well, pass. Just, just go back to the yep. Ravens for a second. You have an opportunity. We or say me. this every time there's a Thursday game. Mm-hmm. Go get a tight end now. There's a very realistic possibility that Mark Andrews with the knee, with the shoulder, that they may sit him, get him healthy for their bye week. That's the one position you could try and save yourself. You could find running backs. You could find receivers, potentially. But you have an opportunity to find a single position that there may be somebody you can get right now. Hayden Hurst being the guy we just said. Find someone you could help you for at least for week nine. Right. While you you should me- Bateman should be mentioned, too. He left yeah, with I, the, Sorry, the Bateman. With the foot, right? Yeah, but, I mean, he's, he's dropped all at this point. Agreed. Um, I can't really recommend Will Disley, but Will Disley gets Arizona next week. Arizona and Seattle, the two worst against tight ends, they face off next week. Um, but yeah, you could go, let's see, who could you get? Hayden Hurst would obviously be our favorite. I would say Harrison Bryant, but I believe the Browns are buying week nine. They do. Yep. Dalton Schultz in shallow league. Dalton has a buy in week nine. 
Um, boy, Cotton is Herb, a Herb Smith. The guy. Still, you can't get Cade Otten because they played last night. Oh, that's right. You can't do that. Um, Herb Smith, Smith would Washington. be decent. How about Logan Thomas? You know, Logan Thomas was pretty darn good with Taylor Heineke last year. He was like a top eight tight end. If you remove the game, he played two snaps. He you gets could, Minnesota next week. You could add him and sit on him and hope that he plays. Yeah, I mean, I know we're we're grasping for straws here, but it's not exactly a Juwan Johnson, if he's still the guy. Same game. All right, and, and for the Bucks, you had uh, Shaq, Shaq Barrett uh, with an Achilles injury, and that might be a season ender, and that's a tough one. Okay. How, so, I, I, aside from the uh, the teams in their the fans in their respective cities, how are we all not rooting for the Panthers to win that division right now? Because if they win this weekend, they're in first place. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I think I'm more be of a fun. Falcons guy. I like the, huh? I'm more of a Falcons guy. I like oh. the Falcons. I don't okay. know why. I just I've always liked them. I've, I've, I've since since the Dirty Bird days. I've kind of had a thing for the Falcons. Uh, now they're you do lose. the dirty bird dance, don't you? No, no now they lose their next five games. So fantasy takeaways, Jamie, from this game. Why don't you why don't you talk about Tampa Bay first and what's going on there? I mean, at this point, it's just status quo. You know, there's nothing really to tell you. You're starting Brady unless you have a better quarterback option. You're obviously starting the two receivers, and you're starting Fournette. You know, I mean, it's uh, it it's ugly. It it's just what they are at this point. Um, thankfully, the targets have been consistent and the production has been consistent to whatever degree you been seeing it from Evans and for Godwin. You know, Godwin just hasn't scored touchdowns yet, but he's been a nice floor play in PPR. He hasn't delivered on what we expected, but I think that start the production will start to come, uh, hopefully. Uh, the touchdowns will start to come, hopefully, excuse me. Um, Evans has been fine. You know, Fournette has been very frustrating, but at least he's done something to help you in some way, shape, or form, whether it's been the catches or the touchdowns. Last night was the touchdowns. So again, you're not getting, you know, um, negative production for where you're starting these guys you're just not getting the ceiling from them so i, I think for the bucks you just kind of you know roll with it you know the one guy that's replaceable of those of those main options is brady and you know probably the minute that you bench him is the minute that he starts to you know click and get things right so just take that for what it's worth and just know what you're getting with whoever you're going to start in placement how much faith do you have that he is going to get things right you know, the offensive line was always going to be, okay, what happens if the line does struggle? And he's facing pressure, and he's in a lot of, you know, long down and distance situations uh, that's not favorable for a 45-year-old quarterback at this stage of his career. And so um, not all of it's on him by any stretch. I, I think there'll be some better days ahead. How confident am I? I'd be looking for alternatives. It, you know, if my, if my fantasy team's in a good spot, I'd be looking for alternatives. I'm losing confidence. I, I thought he was off target. He was officially off target on six throws last night. I thought it was eight. I think he held the ball too long on four throws where he could have had some better gains. He should have been picked off three separate times in the game. Uh, great throws. I tracked that. He had four of them. I'm nervous about him. I don't think the offensive line is the biggest problem. At least it wasn't last night. I think it was Brady. I think that he just doesn't have the same type of like perfection on his throws. Like that early throw in the game where Evans was open in the end zone, just too much touch on it, too much air under it. And it, if, if it was a shorter pass, not a shorter pass, but a faster pass, I think that Evans would have scored on the play. And we probably would be feeling a lot better. He's been terrible inside the 10 the last two weeks. I, I'm a little more nervous than Jamie is, but not to the point where I'm going to say, you can't start Brady. He's absolutely horrible. But I agree, you've got to look and see what other quarterbacks are out there. And this is another position you could go and check out now and add somebody um, in, in the wake of this game. Justin Fields. You still have a Friday and a Saturday. To go oh, pick Fields is up. a great guy to add with all the buys. Super the one. Yes. Yeah. Um, man, that throw to Mike Evans might – I mean, I, hadn't, I haven't seen every throw he's made, but that may have been the worst throw he's made all year. I, inexcusable. No, he's Mike made – he had back-to-back -back inside the 10 lawn darts last week. I, t I know, but those guys were covered. So, Mike uh, Evans was, was, was I don't wide think so. open in the back of the end zone. I don't think See, so. See, Brady can't get out of the pocket. So I think when he throws these lawn darts, I think that's his way of throwing the ball away to avoid grounding. But I can't really mm -hmm. defend him anymore. I mean, he had I, he had a horrible game. There's really no denying it. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's frustrating. Uh, uh, you know, teams aren't blitzing him as much. He is getting rid of the ball very quickly. But he's also just still not getting enough from Godwin. I, you know, a lot of targets. He had a 44-yard catch in this game, and he was basically like a running back for for a lot of his catches. Mm -hmm. How many yeah. how many throws at the line of scrimmage for Godwin? His route depth still extremely low. Um, please just get Bruce Arians back. Let's that's what we need. We need <laughs> Bruce Arians. Um, <laughs> only for the press conferences. 
How about for the Ravens? I wish they had used Gus Edwards more. He averaged yeah, that was six yards per carry. That was disappointing. Dave, your any Ravens? Any Here's Ravens? Hampton, though. Well, yeah, but even before that, I mean, I wish they had used. Yeah, him yeah, but I who, mean, knows, who knows? At what point though, it started to bother him. You know, he might have tried to play through it. Maybe, but it, it was disappointing they didn't, they didn't start. I don't think he played until their second series, or th- actually, technically okay. their third series, because he didn't play on their first drive, and then they got the ball back after the muff punt, and then he wasn't even in then, and they were near the goal line. So it was a little frustrating. And when he ran, man, did he look good? But unfortunately, he's got this hamstring injury, and we'll see what happens with him. Drake really didn't run that well outside of the 40-yard gain he had late. Um, got lucky with the touchdown catch, available in 54% of leagues. I, I don't know if there's a Ravens running back that you can feel really good about having on your team. But if you're if, if we get through the weekend and no one else gets hurt, he will be a popular ad for one week because he's got the Saints in week nine. Jamie, are you going to start Isaiah likely next week against a team that is second best against tight ends? If Mark Andrews is out, likely had 77 yards and a touchdown on seven targets. I will likely put him in the low end starting range. Yes. Okay. Chris Towers last night said, and of course, we're not going to hold him to this, that he'd rank him third next week if Mark Andrews were out. So he'd be very excited. Uh, We're going to take a break here. When we come back, we'll give you your news and notes. Beat the waiver wire, one question for each game, and we will get into it. We'll be right back on Fantasy Football today. Your news and notes, Ryan Tannehill was limited. It's pretty much all the quarterback news that's new. Uh, Ezekiel Elliott likely out. Tony Pollard's our start of the week. DeAndre Swift practiced in full, so we're we're feeling good about him. You guys ranking James Conner yet? Not no, yet. let's see what he does on Friday. All righty. Uh, let's see. What else we got here at running back? Daryl Henderson's got this illness. Uh, he should be good. Raheem Mostert was limited with a knee injury. That's a downgrade, so we'll keep an eye on that. Still no Chuba Hubbard. So we'll see if he practices today, but that would obviously have a pretty big impact on how we rank Deontay Foreman. The Bears are going to go running back by committee, and the Jets are going to use the hot hand approach. Uh, have you? Is that When you see that about the Jets, does that make you back off of Michael Carter, Dave? I was backing off of Michael Carter anyway, just because I figure that they're going to use both backs and Robinson's better suited at, at the goal line. And I would tell you that Carter's better suited in the passing game, but Zach Wilson doesn't throw to his running backs very much. So I'm I'm kind of not excited about the Jets running backs. Plus their offensive line got worse with Vera Tucker getting hurt. I'm 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 not excited. Hey, how about Kadarius Tony on the Chiefs now? 54% roster. Jamie, give me a 30-second reaction what it means for Tony, for Juju, MVS, etc. It's definitely better for Tony's long-term value, so dynasty managers should be thrilled, uh, especially if the Chiefs do not retain either one of Juju Smith-Schuster or Miko Hardman next year. It is bad for Sky Moore's dynasty value because now there's another young receiver that he's going to have to share the field with at some point, so tough scenario for him. Uh, for this season, I don't know if it's going to make much of a difference, but I think it's worth your time to add Kadarius Tony if you have an open roster spot just to see. And lo and behold, those hamstrings, I'm sure they're just <laughs> magically healed. Yeah. Well, he says he's healthy. I guess the Giants didn't really want to rush him back. And they have a bye this week. So he <laughs> they wanted to rush him out. out. Yeah. Right. yeah it really seems that way. And rush him out, I don't know. But they they obviously didn't value him, uh, you know, based on his talent, you know. Uh, anyway, uh, it's, he's on a bye, and the Chiefs maybe get Kadarius Tony going next week. Debo Samuel still missing practice, so we got to keep an eye on that. That's the first game we're going to talk about today. Devontae Adams has a bad flu, but he is expected to play at the Saints. Monroe St. Brown still in the concussion protocol, but he's expected. You know what happens if, if Adams plays, you could say? Oh, he flew in for the game. What? He flewed you. <laughs> flewed you. <laughs> Good. Corey Davis missed practice. Julio Jones uh, played. I don't know why I still have him in the notes. Jarvis Landry and Michael. I'm Rod Burgundy. Jarvis Landry and Michael <laughs> Thomas missed practice. Nico Collins missed practice. Christian Watkins and Sammy Watkins were limited. And Alan Lazard is almost certainly not going to play this week. Uh, Noah Brown missed practice. Uh, what else? What else? Uh, guys, Rashad Bateman is questionable. Mark Andrews is questionable. <laughs> They're going to play today. <laughs> Do you know the status of J.K. Dobbins, Adam? I'm. Uh, I wish. I wish. I wish we would have said sit Mark Andrews and <laughs> Rashad yeah, Bateman. Oh, right? Yeah. Uh, D.K. Metcalf missed practice. 
So they haven't ruled him out yet. I'm assuming we're not expecting him to play. And Jahan Dotson's not going to play this week. Uh, David Njoku did not rule himself out yet. He's supposed to miss two to five weeks. Probably going to miss the game. They're playing Monday, but he didn't rule himself out yet. Dalton Schultz got in a limited sesh. Logan Thomas, 18% roster. He scored nine, nine and a half or more PPR fantasy points in four out of five healthy games last season with Taylor Heineke. He had 30 to 48 yards in all five games. Now, what, no Curtis Samuel really last year. No Dotson. I'm not saying he's going to do it again, but uh, Logan Thomas was a top. If you take out the game that he missed, that he played two snaps last year, I think he was a top eight tight end per game, two straight seasons. Um, and that's pretty much going to do it for our news and notes. Let's play beat the waiver wire. Six teams on a bye next week. Cleveland, hey. Dallas, Denver, Giants, Niners, Steelers. And the Giants have the best record of all of those teams. Just want to point that out just in case everybody was not aware of that. Hmm. All right. I, I mean, obviously we need players, but I have a whole list here. I don't know who you guys like. I, I think Justin Fields against the Dolphins makes sense. I don't know that I like love any other quarterback matchups. I don't trust Tannehill at Kansas City even in a good matchup. Mariota against the Chargers. I don't know. Should we just should we just say Fields is the guy? Fields yes. is the guy. I might I might say Tannehill is next best, but it's it's a big gap. Who do the Colts have? Uh, I got it. The Colts, the Colts have Patriots. On the road. Yeah, not good for Ellinger if he's good. Um, good Gurr, baby. Oh, yeah, Gurr. We're just going to call him Gurr. Gurr. <laughs> you could also start thinking about adding Deshaun Watson. If I'm not going to I'm not gonna get into the morality of it. You could do what you want. But he's not too, too far away. I think week 13 he'll be back. Uh, I don't know if you want to stash Cam Akers ahead of the trade deadline. If you're no, guessing- you know a couple players that you could be looking to add uh, for this week. Um, Malcolm Brown, in case this illness for Daryl Henderson's a problem. Kieran Williams, if you're not looking for somebody right away, because it's not guaranteed he's going to play, but he would be the better of the two, I think. Uh, Dearness Johnson is someone to pick up ahead of the trade deadline, just in case Kareem Hunt is traded. Um, he's somebody that could you know, clearly be an injury away if Hunt is gone to superstardom. <clears throat> and we certainly saw that last year at one point. He played for both the guys. So there's a couple of names you could just be looking ahead right now running back wise to mm-hmm. beat the rush. I, I like where you're going with that. Uh, I like Kyron Williams. Um, how about, how about your Michael hasty in Jacksonville? He's the next guy up behind ETN. I wonder what they would do though, because with Snoop Connor too. I, I know the Snoop Connor's there. I don't know if they trust him in certain situations yet. Yeah. I mean, hasty is the right one. You're, you're, you're dead on with that. But I, I just wonder sure. like if it's, if, if something happens, ETN, it, it, how much of a committee is it? Oh, it'll probably be, a, it'll probably be a duo. But I think most of the high value touches will go to Hasty. And we kind of skipped over the Packers injuries, but Christian Watson's been practicing and he's available in 86% of leagues. And we know what his upside is. We know the Packers is they're a mess right now, but Rodgers is looking for anybody who can make plays in the passing game. Maybe he comes through. I also for wide receiver would like to point out Josh Palmer. 28% rostered with Mike Williams not expected to play. Atlanta is their matchup. They give up the most fantasy points to wide receivers. In week nine, Josh Palmer, you could take a look at him. Van Jefferson, too. Yeah. Van Jefferson. Oh, Jefferson's Mooney. a good stash. Um, Adam, I know on your list you've got Darnell Mooney. I think yeah. he's a good stash. I would take anybody who's playing this week ahead of, ahead of anybody who's not playing this week. So I wouldn't stash Palmer. I wouldn't stash... McCall Hardman, I wouldn't stash MBS if he's out there over guys like Mooney, Watson, um, and other receivers that have a shot to do well, something. I take, Palmer, I take Palmer over all those guys. Yeah, well, this is just a stash. I mean, if you don't need these I guys. I think you can get Palmer next week. I don't think you have to why you stash want him. to get ahead of it, though. That's, where, that's why we're beating the waiver wire, baby. No, we don't want to take that. I, I, I don't know how many people are going to be clamoring for Josh Palmer. But they're clamoring Tuesday. for Darnell Mooney? Uh, no, but if Mooney has a good game somehow against Dallas, you'll be happy you have him. Same thing with Christian Watson. Same thing with Rondell I'd Moore. Rather, I'd rather have. spend zero a zero dollar bid on Josh Palmer as opposed to when every waiver wire column next week is going to be saying pick up Josh Palmer because Mike Williams is out. But how honestly, how much fab are you going to spend on Josh Palmer next week? 
Zero versus one is the one less dollar you get to. Okay, to it doesn't. It, it's it's just we're just giving you a name if you want to consider getting ahead of it here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this, I'm just I trying mean, to be hyper efficient with my waiver ads. I get That's it. And I'm Mooney's doing. a lot more roster than Palmer, and and they've got the Dolphins who have a very depleted secondary next week. So you know Mooney's not a bad guy to stash. Uh, how about last one, Elijah Moore? How do you feel about him? And of course, Hayden Hurst is now in this discussion as well. But how do you feel about Elijah Moore? Not good. With the hope he gets traded? No, with the hope that he is revived. I didn't. I can't see him getting revived on this team at this point. You know, Corey Davis probably have to miss the rest of the season, and they're just desperate. So they're not Joe Flacco the needs to be under center for me to like Elijah. Moore. Yes. And the way that that worked out before was like nine PPR points a game. Okay. One question for each game: San Francisco at the Rams. Do you trust any Rams other than Cooper Cup, Dave Richard? Yeah, I trust Tyler Higby. He had a huge PPR game last time these two teams played, and he's got a pretty decent track record of scoring on San Francisco. And I just I doubt that the Rams are about to become a running team, especially in this game. 49ers are awesome against the run. So the way they get around the run is a bunch of dink and dunk passes. Higby picks up a lot of that. Totally good with Higby this week. Okay, the Panthers-Falcons. Huge game in the NFC South. Who's the best running back in this game, Jamie? Carolina-Atlanta. Both Panthers guys, if they play over any Falcons guys, unless Cordero Patterson is miraculously healed. He, he can't be. He's on IR. He can't play in the game, even if he is miraculously healed. Uh, I think there's. I, I think Hubbard won't play, and therefore there's only one running back really worth starting in this game, and it's Foreman, and I think he's going to be a number two running back this week. I'm excited. Okay, uh, Giants, Giants, Seahawks. Who's the best quarterback in this game? Daniel I'll Jones. take Gino. Who'd you say, Jim? Daniel Jones. How come? Think, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Jamie. Jamie. Oh, how come? Said, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I want um, to your- his rushing ability is going to help him score more fantasy points than Geno Smith, who's going to be without DK Metcalf. I get it. Um, I, I think this is a favorable matchup for Geno, all things being equal, because the pressure that the Giants put on quarterbacks – isn't like what he's had to deal with the past couple of games. Obviously not having DK Metcalf makes him a bus candidate for sure. But I think that he's still got potential. He still can throw the ball really well to Lockett, to Goodwin, to his tight ends. And I, I, not that I love, I don't love Geno Smith, but I think he's got a better shot to get close to 18 fantasy points than Daniel Jones. Okay, I'm going to, I'll talk to you about that matchup a little bit later because I think on paper, what Geno Smith does well is also what the Giants do well defensively. We can talk about we'll talk about that game in depth. You know, I actually thought Giants Seahawks was going to be a pretty easy game to preview, but I actually think it's a fascinating matchup. Uh, I think it's going to be a fun game. It might be the best game of the week. Yeah, I mean, well, I'll be the, I'll decide that. But uh, starters <laughs> with some fun music. Okay, starter sit time here. Let's go to San Francisco and the Rams. The Rams now are one and seven in their last game, the last eight games against the 49ers, including the playoffs. And in those games, they're averaging 17.1 points per game. I really think the big question here is which 49ers defense shows up because they have been miserable the last two weeks. 28 points allowed to the Falcons, 44 points allowed to the Chiefs. They're giving up big plays all over the field. Um, they're maybe getting a little healthier. I think Samson Ebucam might be able to come back. I hope Dre Greenlaw can play Jimmy Ward, Jason Verrett. I'm not sure if he's in play this week or he's coming off IR. I think um, he is. So what do you think, Dave? I mean, do we getting, are we getting a closer version to the elite? He's not going to be elite, you know, but are they going to be a good defense or the layup matchup that they've been basically the last two weeks? I think they'll be a good defense. I think that they're going to give the Rams a hard time. Rams, I I don't think the bye was enough time for them to get their offensive line healthy and to reconfigure their offense. They're going to, I bet they fall back on what they've been doing all year, which is letting Matthew Stafford throw a ton. 49ers will be prepared for that. They've talked all week. D'Amico Ryans and everybody has talked all week about how their offense is Cooper Cup, Cooper Cup, Cooper Cup. And so my guess is that their number one game plan is going to be don't let Cooper Cup run free deep. So you'll see him get double teamed. The Rams combat to that has been to just let Cup run short routes and just pepper him and hope that he can break free for some yards after the catch. What they might be able to do differently if Van Jefferson plays is use Jefferson on intermediate and deeper throws. 
I wouldn't count on Van Jefferson in fantasy because we just don't know how good he'll be or how much he'll play, but that could be a counter move that they would make. The counter move they won't make is run the ball. They just, they're not going to be able to do it. The 49ers run defense is too good. So I'm, I'm nervous about the Rams. You asked the question about who else is a safe start besides cup. I think we answered that with Tyler Higby. And I think the 49ers DST is a good start this week. I think they'll get after Stafford and Stafford's thrown a pick six or something close to that. The, the, the defenses have scored a touchdown on the Rams. I think it's four straight games or four of the past five. Whoa. If you give me a second, I will tell you exactly what it is. I have it. It's each of the past three games and four of the past five. A DST has scored against the Rams. You could probably bank on it happening again here. Oh, uh, that's uh, that's not something you can bank on, Dave. But I, I'm, I'd go the to your way that the Rams are going to move the ball around. I think the 49ers will be able to capitalize. I'll give I'm you starting the 49ers DST. What odds do you want that the Niners score a defensive touchdown? What do we have? What do I have to put up for you to grow a mustache if the 49ers defense scores a touchdown? <laughs> Or special teams, because that counts too. It's DST. <laughs> um, you have to send me. You have to send me lunch. Let's make a food bet. That doesn't you, benefit our audience. Oh, uh, then I don't know. I, I don't know what you have to put up. A thousand dollars, and I'll, if you, I'll grow a mustache. You give me a thousand dollars, Jamie. I owe you a little bit of money. Can I keep it, and we can start building a pot toward this thing? <laughs> <laughs> Leave me out of it. You guys make your own bet on this. <laughs> I think a thousand for a mustache is worth it. Yeah, I think so. so I'll win a thousand dollars if they don't. Do I have to pay you the that. thousand all at once? Oh, absolutely. Or could I pay you a dollar a year for a thousand years? <laughs> uh, which quarterback do you prefer in this game, Stafford or Garoppolo? Garoppolo. Uh, Stafford slightly. Okay, man. How like... do you see this game going, dude, James? Because I, I just, I. I have no confidence in Stafford coming through with good. I see this being a get the run game going for San Francisco because they need to, to get back on track. And so Fair. what did they have for the last, uh, you know, eight days is the guy that they just traded for and spent, you know, their future on. So I think it's a McCaffrey game for the 49ers, especially if Debo doesn't play. So that's why I would favor Stafford. I, I agree with you. I don't think Stafford's going to have a good game, but I don't think Garoppolo's going to have a good game either because I think it's going to be, you know, at best, best case scenario for him is like a 202. Because un unless this game get, <clears throat> gets sideways for San Francisco, which means it's getting sideways for San Francisco because Stafford had a good game. Because they're, I agree, they're not going to run on them. So the only way Garoppolo, I think, has a great game is if the, the 49ers come out and say, we are throwing the ball, throwing the ball, throwing the ball. And that would just go counterproductive to everything I think that they want to be right now. So I, I don't uh, think they can do that if they don't have Debo. I don't think they would think. I don't think that, that's what think I'm saying. Like, if, if, if you just, like, I don't think either quarterback is good. But if I had to choose one, I'm taking Stafford because that's the only path, I think, to one of these quarterbacks in this game getting to the point where it needs to be for these quarterbacks to play well is Stafford getting it there. Would you start Russell Wilson over Matthew Stafford? Yes. Yes. And I, but I would start Garoppolo start. over Russ. Okay. So I know you guys would start Dalton and Daniel Jones ahead of these guys. Uh, mm, well, I'll start no, Garoppolo no. over those guys. I okay, would start Dalton thanks. over both these guys easily. You'd start Jones and Dalton? Easily. Yeah. Dave would not. He'd start Garoppolo. I would over Stafford, not Garoppolo. Okay. Dave also likes P.J. Walker better than Stafford, but not Garoppolo. Correct. Uh, right. So the running backs, are we sitting uh, We're sitting Daryl Henderson? I would try to. I'm not excited about him. He, he might be able to be decent in PPR. Might be able to catch three or four passes. That's a counter move that the Rams could make, is using him out of the backfield. But He's I'm not sure how effective. I'm sorry? No, good. Uh, I, I don't know how effective it'll be if he's not practicing a lot this week. And they've got, they don't have just Malcolm Brown behind him. Not that Malcolm Brown's any good. They've got Ronnie Rivers too. Um, we'll, we'll see. I, I just, I don't, I don't want to start him knowing that he had a terrible game against them playing as a part-time back earlier this year. Doesn't have a great track record against them in general. And it's, it's just a really good run defense. Like that has stayed true throughout their entire run. The past two weeks where their defense has been bad. It's been against the pass, not as much against the run. They the, the range of Daryl Henderson is is Najee Harris and David Montgomery and you know those the Michael Carter and those guys that are just all you know questionable starts at best. Mm -hmm. He's never scored on the Niners. He's been under forty eight total yards in five of six career meetings. Now again, some of those times he was a part time player. This week he should be, I think, their lead guy, but that might mean ten carries and two catches. 
Okay, let's go to Allen Robinson coming off a good game. Uh, I think you guys have him ranked similarly to Wandale Robinson. Who would rather have Allen or Wandale Robinson? Wandale in PPR by a mile and half PPR as well. Uh, full of non-PPR is close. I mean, you know, you're counting on these guys scoring touchdowns. And so I think Rob- Allen Robinson has two, and he's played the majority of the season, and Wandale Robinson has one, and <laughs> he's played two games. You know, so um, right. I'll Rob- take Wandale. Allen Robinson does have uh, an end zone target in every single game. He's among the leaders in end zone targets. And how about this? The 49ers, the first four weeks of the year, they allowed six completions of 20 or more yards. In the last three weeks, they've allowed 13 completions of 20 or more yards. That's third most sure. in football. And yeah. just how many eight. last week? Uh, oh, uh, I, I, what did I say? I said 13 over the last three weeks, right? Yes. Okay, so I'll tell you. Week what I would say, seven. I would treat Allen Robinson like, like I would a touchdown or bust tight end. He could score, and he also might finish with two catches, 14 yards, and a touchdown. Seven last week against the Chiefs. Yeah, so, I mean. But that's the Chiefs. Not, none against the Falcons, probably? What was that, week six? Zacchaeus might have had one. I remember Zacchaeus having a big play in that game. Hodge I mean, might two, have had a big two play. Two against the Falcons. Yeah, and then so, four yeah, just none to London or Pitts because the Falcons right. stink. Bad. Let's let's go here. Tyler Higby is a, is a is a start, um, and you start him over Pitts, of course. You're starting over Dalton Schultz, Jimmy Garoppolo. Dave has him twelfth. Jamie has him seventeenth. Um, Christian McCaffrey slam dunk or actually can, is he behind Etn, Ken Walker, Tony Pollard? No, uh, he's behind Pollard in, in non PPR. That's an easy one. Behind Walker and non PPR, it's an easy one. Um, full PPR is that a little good? He is behind Henry Barkley and Jacobs for me in non PPR. He is at the top of the list in full PPR. Oh, all right. I mean, the Rams do have a great run defense here, but he just faced them and had 13 carries for 69 yards. And he had seven catches for 89 yards two weeks that, ago. That last that last part of it though, that's the key. Right. Well, they throw it to him the same way. I how many catches do you think he gets in this game? I'd say five. That's I, I let's set the over under at, at five and a half. Which side is everybody going to be on? That would be something. Under. Well, I, I think I'd be on the under two, but just, know, I agree happens. with five. I think five is doable. I'd say more if Debo doesn't play, right? Maybe, but I, I'm not ready to say, well, he's never going to catch passes because Kyle Shanahan has a track record of not throwing to his running backs. He's never had Christian McCaffrey or a guy like Christian McCaffrey in his backfield. Yeah, uh, Pete Prisco on, on Monday him. said he's, he spoke to some guys in the league about the trade and that um, he said this on our show on HQ, so if you want to go back and look at it, that okay. uh, this would be the dumbest trade in history if they don't throw the ball to him. Yes, but, exactly. And right. Shannon's a smart guy. so I think Brandon Ayuk, start or sit? I think it's an easy start if Samuel doesn't play. And even if Samuel plays, he might be less than 100%, might be a decoy. I like Ayuk. I've got him as a number two receiver. Again, I'll go back to I think how this game's going to go. If Debo plays, I think he's at best a number three receiver in three receiver leagues. If Debo is out, then he's a borderline starter. I just don't see the 49ers having the same volume that they've had the last couple of weeks because I don't think they're chasing points to the same level. Kittle or Higby? Kittle. Kittle. Kittle's number one for me this week. Oh, we have now reached a full season. 17 games, the last 17 games the Rams have played, they have allowed one touchdown to a tight end. It was George Kittle in the NFC Championship game. Mm-hmm. But that's that's it. One touchdown to a tight end. In the first matchup, he had two catches for 24 yards on four targets. Um, all right, so you're going to start him. Dave's very optimistic about him. And which DST do you like better in this game, Rams or Niners? Niners. Rams. Hey, okay, great. But they're both worth worth starting. Yep. All righty. We're going to take a quick break here, our last one of the show. And when we come back, Carolina at Atlanta, the showdown. That's the thing. I'm out of the Rams. I'm out of the 49ers. Sorry. They're both back, like, right close. Okay. 40, then we'll just say 49ers. Yep. We'll take a break. And Carolina, Atlanta, when we come back. Welcome back. Could be a good game for at least one wide receiver. <laughs> These two teams see the most <laughs> wide receiver targets per game in the NFL. And Atlanta allows the most fantasy points to wide receivers. And that's our stat of the game, Jamie. Uh, Atlanta has allowed 
So here, here's how here, here it is. 11 wide receivers have scored 15 or more PPR fantasy points against the Falcons in seven games. I mean, that is crazy. They've had some successes, but for the most part, they're just awful against the position. However, of those 11 wide receivers who have scored 15 or more points, 10 of them have had eight or more targets. The only exception was T. Higgins, who had seven targets. Uh, so the question is about DJ Moore, of course. You can't get a better matchup. Will he have the volume? And do you start him? Like you, not, you don't really want to start Brandon Ayuk if Debo Samuel plays. Would you start DJ Moore over him? Tell me about DJ Moore. Yeah, I'm excited about DJ Moore. You know, I think what we we got the first game without Christian McCaffrey, and we saw you know ten targets, and it's the second time in the last four weeks he's had double digits in targets, and the first time he had 12 PPR points, and then last week he scored his you know scored a touchdown. So um, I have no faith in PJ Walker, but I think PJ Walker at least did what he was supposed to do last week, which was get DJ Moore the ball. And so this is a game where I, I think he can do the same thing again. At least I hope so. So, you know, the, the nice thing about it was that Walker showed that he could throw the ball past the line of scrimmage. And so with AJ Terrell not expected to go, with Casey Hayward not there, you know, secondary is already, you know, beat up to begin with. Pass rush shouldn't be too much of an issue. They're going to try and run the ball and run the ball and run the ball. But I think they'll still get DJ Moore his eight to 10 targets. And I think in that type of scenario, he should be fine. So um, your prop bet, I think, is in trouble. Adam, the one you gave us for Friday show of, you know, PJ Walker under half a touchdown, I think we'll get one. And that one will go to DJ Moore. <laughs> yes. Well, hold on real quick for the record. So we have to give uh, props. It's a fun segment. Fun segments we do on HQ. Uh, the props were horrible. That was like, the only one that had any decent odds. It was plus money. PJ Walker under half a touchdown. It could easily happen, by the way. But if you look at the rankings, the biggest thing that jumps out, I think, is that Dave is pretty high on PJ Walker. And talk about that, Dave. Why are you high on, on Walker? High, you know, he's worth- high being that he's like a top 16 quarterback. Yeah, I think that's pretty noteworthy. And Jamie uh, just laid it out for me. Yeah. The the Falcons defense is missing its top cornerbacks. Their pass rush isn't that great. Panthers offensive line has started to play a little bit better too over the past few weeks. And Walker made some money throws in week number seven. Uh, I'm encouraged that three of the targets that <laughs> DJ Moore had went further than 10 air yards. And they were they were accurate. I think Walker, if he's got time to throw. And make some big throws and i think we'll see that again i i wouldn't i'm not rushing to start pj walker he's at best a bye week replacement at quarterback but i think he'll be good and i think dj moore's got a shot to be must start as a flex and maybe a low-end number two fantasy wide receiver i'm 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 encouraged by what i saw yeah he's, he's nearly top 15 for me he's in top 20 now dj moore yeah sure and and the fact that there isn't another pass catcher in carolina holds back pj walker from being um, like even like a top 12 type of fantasy quarterback. All right. So are we sitting Drake London and Kyle Pitts? Yes. Yeah. Well, Pitts is a little different. Yeah. Uh, let's do Pitts real quick here. Pitts or Schultz? Schultz. I will take Schultz in PPR. Non PPR, I think I would take Pitts. Pitts or the Saints tight ends? The Saints tight ends. Uh, I will take Taysom Hill in non PPR. Okay. Uh, how about like a? Just make sure Jawan Johnson plays because if he does, he should be good. Mike Gasicki or Kyle Pitts. You found the barometer. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so um, the running backs are interesting here. You know, the run defenses are also kind of hard to get a grip on. I get maybe they're like average, a little below average. I don't know that mm-hmm. these are cake matchups here. Um, I, I just, I mean, I keep going back to. The, to this Chuba Hubbard versus Deontay Foreman thing. Hubbard was a lot better and a lot more involved than Foreman before he left with an injury. Foreman had nine of his 15 carries after Hubbard left, and they only combined for 12 carries in the first three quarters. And they are a bad football team, I, I think. Um, but they keep it, they've been keeping it close pretty, you know, pretty well uh, recently, the Carolina Panthers, and of course the Falcons almost always do. So, you know, it's, these, these guys are really tough, I think, Jamie, lay out your thoughts on Foreman, Hubbard, if he plays, and Algier. I think it's going to be a Foreman week, even if Hubbard does play, because Hubbard clearly is not 100%. So, you know, while it will be annoying for Foreman if Hubbard is in there, for those of you that are starting Foreman, he should get the majority of the work. And I like the fact that he had two catches last week, so it's not going to be like he's a train wreck in the passing game. But Hubbard, when they're healthy, when everybody's healthy, I agree with you, Adam. I think Hubbard's going to be the better play. Uh, we said that from the beginning, you know, when they traded McCaffrey, that 
His role in the passing game should help him. Game scripts for the majority of the rest of the season should help him in that regard. And the fact that they're not just going to pigeonhole him as a third down back, you know, they're going to give him the opportunity to carry the ball as well. So for this week, Foreman should be a borderline number two running back. If Hubbard is definitely out, he's a slam dunk number two running back ahead of Henderson, ahead of Najee, ahead of Montgomery, um, ahead of Brian Robinson, you know, depending on however, you know, long you want to go, far you want to go. And I'd probably start him over, to be honest, I start him over James Conner, you know, just uh, if Mm -hmm. Conner does play. So he's, he's a, you know, borderline top 20 guy. So hopefully, you know, he takes advantage of this. You know, this should be a game that Carolina can win. I don't know if they will. Uh, Atlanta's, you know, despite their defensive flaws, the run game has carried them. Uh, Marcus Mario hasn't, hasn't made mistakes and, and their, their system has worked, but this is going to be a competitive ball game and Foreman's going to be able to, you know, get the opportunity to be a 20 touch, 20 touch guy for a game like this. That's, that's a pretty good spot to be in. Uh, Tyler Algier, number three running back. Like, where, where does he compare to? You're Sitchi? hoping for uh, fifty or sixty yards and maybe a fall into the end zone. James Conner or Tyler Algier? Second time this season for him. James Conner or Tyler Algier? Conner. Connor. We don't even know if Conner's going to play, by the way. But yeah, it's only if Conner's healthy. Uh, how about PPR? Would you start Naeem Hines or Tyler Algier? I think Hines. Uh, Hines and PPR. All right. Sit Mariota, sit London, sit Pitt, sit Tommy Tremble, even though Atlanta's bad against Tyler. He looked good on his deep target for a touchdown last week. Well, one cat. That was his only target. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's, uh, that's that game. Okay. So let's go to the Giants at the Seahawks. You know, the Giants are six and one. And if you look at, there's a metric called DVOA from Football Outsiders. Uh, they they count for a lot of different things to measure, say, a defense. How good are they? They kind of they, they count for the opponents, the situations, all these things. The Giants are one of the worst teams in DVOA defensively. So Football Outsiders does not think they're a good defense. That said, they've um, they've I don't know they're like ninth in yards per play, like it's points per game. I think they're top ten. You know, they have seen the fourth fewest plays per game in football. And they are fifth in time of possession. Seattle is 29th. That is a huge storyline in this game. Can the Seahawks possess the ball enough? Uh, and they've been better at that the last two games. In two straight wins over the Cardinals and the Chargers. They've actually been possessing the ball quite a bit. So that's a good sign for the Seahawks. Anyway, Dave, let's talk about Geno Smith. You said yes. that you thought it was a good matchup. I can tell you why it might be a bad matchup. So let's have that discussion, Geno Smith. I think it's a better matchup for him. Giants at the Seahawks. Yeah. All right. Sorry, Dave. I've been planning to interrupt okay. it was just all terrible. week long for this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why is this a good matchup for Geno Smith? I'm I'm just waiting for another like song to come you're up. Good. You're good. You're in the clear. We're good. Yeah. Giants are ranked tied for ninth worst in pass rush pressure rate this year, despite being first in the league in blitz rate. Uh, they've sent uh, they've blitzed the quarterback on minimum of 32 percent of dropbacks. It's a ton. Geno's managed blitzes fairly well this season. He's completing two thirds of his throws against him. 90.1 QB rating. That's okay. 6.69 yards per attempt. That's not great. Um, he's been better naturally when he's not being blitzed. So he'll get blitzed a lot, but really Gino has been at his worst from what I've seen and what the stats say, just when he's under serious pressure in general. But what this is telling me and what the data says is even when the giants blitz a lot, they're not getting to the quarterback enough. And I think that Gino can overcome their blitz and be usable this week. I have him ranked as a top 12 quarterback. I don't love that. I've got him that high, but I think that that's just the nature of the quarterback position. Plus, you'll talk about how Daniel Jones will run a lot. Geno can run, too. He might be able to get you anywhere from 20 to 40 yards on the ground. I think he can find two touchdowns. What I'm really worried about are the pass attempts and the yardage. I don't think he's got a shot at 275 yards, and I don't think he's got a shot at throwing more than, like, 32 passes. Yeah. See, the last thing you said there is what makes me the most concerned about Geno Smith on top of the fact yeah, that the best receiver is not playing is that – Pete Carroll has his dream right now. He's got a run game. His defense is playing well. He doesn't well, have to have Geno make plays. And so this is going to be Ken Walker. This is going to be Ken Walker. This is going to be Ken Walker and more Ken Walker. So 
Gino is not going to have the opportunity, I think, to have the pass attempts that they need because this is going to be Walker versus Barkley and Barkley versus Walker and then the occasional sprinkling in of Daniel Jones running. And so I'd be very, very leery of playing Geno Smith this week unless DK Metcalf has a miraculous recovery, which it does not sound like it's going to be the case. Okay, but then let I, I mostly agree that it's going to be a lot of both running backs. How do you measure Daniel Jones as a better option just because he'll run more? Yeah, 100%. But that's it. Yeah, I think I think both guys are candidates for around 200 yards passing. I don't think we're going to get much more than that from either one of these two. Again, especially if Metcalf does not play. And so what you're seeing from Daniel Jones, which has been fantastic for him, is that he's limiting the mistakes. The turnover has not been a problem for him anymore. Uh, he's making the throws that he has to make. Uh, I think now that he has hopefully a healthy Wanda Robinson, which seems to be the case, he has two guys that can help him in the passing game. You know, losing Bellinger sucks. But two guys in the passing game that can help him in Wanda Robinson and Darius Slayton. While they're not stars, they're making enough plays for him. So he's not going to be a 300-yard passer. He's not going to help your fantasy production with his arm. Uh, that's kind of, you know, this is this is the reverse. Usually we like the rushing numbers to support the passing numbers. This is the passing numbers supporting the rushing numbers. So he's probably going to be in the neighborhood of 60 to 80 yards rushing. And mm. that's a lot to ask, but that's kind of where he's been. Three of his mm. last four games, 67 or more rushing yards. So the one game where he didn't do it was when he had the sprained ankle going into the Baltimore game. So right. if he runs to the same level finds the ability, maybe gets the end zone with his legs, gets you 200 yards passing, not a top 10 guy, but as you just said, really this is an indication of where we are with the quarterbacks. No Mahomes, no Herbert this week, the guys who are banged up. I think he's in that 18 to 20 point range. I'll take him over Geno Smith. Okay. Jamie's got Daniel Jones 12th, so he has Derek Carr, Jared Goff, and Dak Prescott ahead of him. Love Goff this week. Okay, we'll get to that game shortly. Dalton, Geno Smith, Russell Wilson, Matthew Stafford, Garoppolo, Aaron Rodgers, Trevor Lawrence behind Daniel Jones. Uh, Dave, while we're talking quarterbacks, uh, Nathaniel Hackett just said Russell Wilson will start. All right, I was about to say that. Uh, thank you, Jamie. Russell Wilson is going to start. He practiced in full today. Uh, okay, so also on this game, uh, you know, just keep in mind, the Giants lost two starting offensive linemen last week. Seahawks pass rush has been kind of middle of the pack three straight weeks in pressure rate. They've been right around 15th, 16th. So that's not good for Jones, but for not good for Gino is this is what I was talking about. It's kind of, it reminds me of the Cardinals matchup a couple weeks ago. Giants don't give up a lot of big plays through the air. And that's pretty much all the Seahawks do. Uh, Gino Smith and Josh Allen have been the best deep ball passers in football this year. The Giants have been pretty good in that regard. Um, very good in that regard, actually. And uh, limiting those big plays downfield. Um, so there, there's that, and then there's the time of possession thing I mentioned, and the fact that the Giants are giving up the second most yards per carry to running backs, the second most yards per catch to running backs too, which is weird. They have already given up four 100-yard rushing games to running backs, and none of those running backs have even had more than 15 carries, and Ken Walker's got two straight games with more than 20 carries, so Ken Walker should be awesome this week. Start Barkley, start Walker. We talked about the quarterbacks. Start Tyler Lockett. Um, you like Marquise Goodwin if Metcalf's at or or Wandale Robinson. And then, Jamie, what do you think about Darius Slayton? Talk about the other wide receivers in this game. Uh, Wandale Robinson would be my favorite non tyler locker receiver in this game. Then I would go with Marquise Goodwin. Then I would go with Darius Slayton. I mean, Slayton's, you know, you, you've seen it. It's it's two of three games. He's been productive. Two games ago, it was the big play. You know, so there's opportunities now without Bellinger there. You know, I, I think there's probably a mindset, you know, certainly in the wide receiver room of, okay, now Tony's not coming back. We know what we're dealing with unless they make a trade, which uh, you're hearing a lot of potential Jerry Judy to uh, the Giants if the Broncos lose this game because Brian Dable was uh, on the Alabama staff when they recruited him to Alabama. So there's a familiarity there. Uh, but that's a, a separate note. But in any event, I, I think you look at Slayton and you look at uh, at Wandale as, you know, six to eight target guys. Um, I shouldn't say that. Wandale's probably more than that. If, if, if last week was any indication with eight targets. Yeah. For that. Yeah. Um, but probably six to eight targets is, is, is the way to ballpark it. No Bellinger, no Galladay, you know, so it's uh, it's going to be some concentrated targets. So that's nice if you're looking at Darius Slayton this week. Can you name the team that allows the most yards after catch per reception to slot receivers? Yes, I can. <laughs> uh, well, is it them? Now, or now you know who it is. is. Well, I know I was going to say they've given up the ninth most yards out of the slot, fourth most yards per catch out of the slot, fourth most 20 plus yard completions out of the slot. That's Seattle. Yes. So that's those are all really good Wandell Robinson stats. There's one more. He had that groin ish injury. We don't really know what it was. He had all of his production in the first half. He may not have been healthy in the second half, but he had six for 50 on eight targets in the first half last last week. 
Um, so you know, that was that was a great sign for Wanda Rob. Would you start Wanda Robinson or um Michael Pittman? Pittman. Pittman. How it's, about Wandale or, or Paris Campbell or Chris or uh, what's his oh, name? Pierce. Wandale over those guys. Yeah. All right. Wandale or Curtis Samuel at the Colts. I'll take Wandale. Uh, Samuel. That's I'll cool. take Wandale over Brandon Cooks, over Mooney, Allen Robinson. Wow. Okay. Michael Gallup. All right. I think that's it for this game then. And sit the tight ends. And the D- you, you guys don't have the DSTs ranked very high, so I guess we're sitting them. Arizona's at Minnesota. Minnesota is 12th in scoring defense, but they allow the third most yards per play. So we'll see what happens. And they are the worst. This is interesting. They're the worst red zone defense in the NFL. They've only allowed 15 red zone trips in six games, but 80% have ended in touchdowns. That's Minnesota's defense. And Arizona's had a real problem in the red zone. So we'll see. All right. Um, I don't even know if I asked you the one question for each game for this one. You didn't. You skipped half the games. I did skip half the games. What the hell was that all about? Uh, you were too excited to talk about Falcons Panthers. Why didn't you call me out on that? I don't know. You don't even read your private chat messages that I've sent you during the show. Wow, that's so bad. I am sorry about that, folks. Okay. The question for this game was, are you feeling it? Which is the question every week for the Vikings. Jamie, are you feeling it? Yes. Why? Uh, I, I mean, again, you you look at what he was doing prior to the bye week, you know, seven or, or more targets in, in four straight games. And he's got a good track record against the Cardinals. Not that he's played in very much, but three times in his career, he scored a touchdown all three times, including once last year. So, you know, I, I think you just look at where his role is and, and the opportunity that he should continue to get in the passing game. Uh, I think Kirk Cousins is going to have a huge game this week. So I like the setup mm-hmm. for him coming off a of bye week. Um, he's had a good track record coming off a of bye as well. And so I think Thielen's in a good spot. Cardinals play heavy zone coverage. Thielen has an 83% catch rate against zone coverage this year compared to 50% against man coverage. And the yards after catch per reception stat that I gave you for Wandale, that's just for slot receivers. Overall to receivers, Arizona's dead last at 5.9 yards after contact per catch. Yards after the catch per reception. They keep everything in front of them and – the only quarterback who throws shorter on average than Kirk Cousins is Matt Ryan. So it's not anymore. Like, he's not. Yeah. seems like a good matchup on paper for the, for what the Vikings like to do. Um, I, yeah. I mean, Thielen just hasn't, you know, Thielen is for the season. He's, he's not even a top 36 wide receiver. He's 37th per game in, in PPR and he's 45th in non PPR. Uh, okay. He's, he's also been very matchup dependent. The teams he's done well against were, 18th, 28th, and 24th against wide receivers. The teams he struggled against are 5th, 10th, and 4th. And, of course, the Cardinals are right in the middle at 14th. So you're starting him. Uh, you're starting out. Okay, start Jefferson, start Cook, Cousins, and Kyler. Who do you like better, Cousins or Kyler? Cousins. Cousins. I will knock out the easy stuff. Uh, Hopkins is a must-start guy. And we'll talk about Irv Smith. We'll talk about Rondell Moore. And we'll talk about the Cardinals running backs. Let's start, Dave, with the Cardinals running backs expectations this week let's say if connor's in and if connor is out against the vikings who are 19th against opposing running backs Eno's a must start if connor is out he's going to be their primary running back he impressed last week he, he played way better than i thought he would part of it is he played against a tired saints defense and this is going to be the opposite this is going to be a rested vikings defense but i don't think it's necessarily a good run defense so i think there's going to be opportunities for the cardinals to run the ball no matter what I think they want to continue to do that. They don't want to force Skyler to throw the ball 42 times a game. So you'll see whoever they have available getting opportunities. I'm nervous about Connor and what he'll be like coming back from this injury because he wasn't necessarily explosive. He Necessarily, he wasn't. He wasn't explosive at all before the injury. He could always score. That's always a good thing. He could catch a couple of passes too. If they both play, I will give a slight lean to Connor. But I think they're both more of like high end flex plays than anything else. Okay. So we don't, we would not like James Conner to play. Uh, if he doesn't play, of course, we'll have updated shows where we can rank Eno Benjamin for you. Uh, Jamie, any interest in Rondale Moore? I, I don't know if he's going to play in the slot. I hope he does. He didn't last week, but he needs to. He's 61% rostered, Rondale Moore. I would not play him this week if you can avoid it, but I would still roster him if you can, you know, just to see what happens. Because if they do go back to him in that role, it was so successful for whoever was playing in that role 
uh, prior to DeAndre Hopkins joining the team. Now, it could just be that Hopkins is their preferred option there, which would be great for him. But if you are still looking at what Rondell Moore and Greg Dorch did, uh, the combination with Marquise Brown, it was, uh, I believe it was before their first six games, it was 13 or more PPR points. So, you know, let's see what happens this week. Uh, again, last week was Hopkins' first game back. Run game was successful. Defense was successful. Don't know if they're going to have that same formula against Minnesota. So if they go back to Kyler Murray being, you know, uh, w- with the volume of pass attempts, you know, in the high 30s, low 40s, then I think there'll be an opportunity for Rondell Moore to still be the third best pass catcher on this team. Because I don't think it's just going to be all DeAndre Hopkins and Zach Ertz and Rondell Moore go by the wayside. All right, guys, how do you feel about Irv Smith going up against the Cardinals who have allowed uh, 60 yards or a touchdown to a tight end in five of seven games? Problem is, you know, four of those tight ends have been Kelsey, Waller, Higby, and Dallas Goddard, but Juwan Johnson also had a big game. Um, Jamie, I'll give you the first word. Like, who are some players that you're starting Irv Smith over? Kyle Pitts, Dalton Schultz, um, Taysom Hill and PPR, um, Greg Dolchitz. Hawkinson? No. Dolchitz and non-PPR, huh? Hawkinson? Hawkinson and non-PPR. Okay. Dave, how about you, Irv Smith? Uh, I'm nervous to start Smith because I'm doing it because of a stat and not because of who the player is and what his role is in the offense. So in PPR, he's 13th for me. I'm starting uh, Hurst, Hawkinson, Dulcich, Evan Ingram ahead of him. I do have him one notch above Schultz. I'm not a Schultz fan this week. Got him ahead of Pitts. In non-PPR, it's a, it's it's kind of the same story, I guess. He's 14th for me there. I'd start him over Schultz, Pitts, Tunyon but behind Dulcich, behind Taysom Hill, behind Hayden Hurst. The thing the thing about it is, like, if you just looked at two of his metrics prior to their bye week and you were to say four catches and a touchdown from your tight end, you would take that probably 10 out of 10. Of course. It's it's, it's the other number that's in there that you don't like where you had four catches for seven yards against the Dolphins. Um, yeah. But this is, uh, you know, you're probably looking at six targets, you know, maybe at, at most. Uh, um, I you're hope. Looking at, I hope. You know, probably four, four to five catches and a good opportunity to score based on how they'll use him against this team. So that's what you're hoping for. I mean, I I like that he's had four catches in each of his past two games, but he hasn't had six targets since week three. He's he's, he is squarely a touchdown or bust tight end. Who's got a really good matchup. Yeah. All right. Miami at Detroit. We got three games left. Let's do this. Miami at Detroit. uh, Stat of the game. He Mostert 14 to 18 carries in four straight games. Every running back who's had 14 to 18 carries against the Lions this year has scored at least one rushing touchdown. Mm-hmm. That's four already have, that have done that. So Mostert's going to be a guy we certainly like. Um, and now, going back to last year, a running back has had 94 rushing yards or a rushing touchdown against the Lions in 19 of 23 games. It is yeah. incredible. Yeah, so, I've got him ranked too low. Where do you have him, and where are you going to move him up to? I, he's outside of my top 15. I think I need to find a way to get him in the top 15. Okay, is that going to be ahead of? Are you going to put Mostert ahead of Miles Sanders? Yeah, I think I, I think I want to, because this matchup is so good, and this isn't just about starting a stat, because that Lions stat is amazing. But Mostert's looked good; he's played well. Yeah. Uh, Jamie, you have him one spot ahead of Aaron Jones. Yep. Stick with that, okay? All right. Yeah, I'd, I'd be down spot. with that too. Why do you like Jared Goff so much, Jamie? Dolphins secondary is a mess. And I think this is a spot for Goff to uh, play well. You've seen him at home. His worst home game so far this season was week one when he had 18 fantasy points against the Eagles. And so is this closer to the Eagles defense or is this closer to the two other teams that he played? Uh, Seattle was one. I forget the other one was. Um, Washington. Um, th- that's closer to th- those type of defenses. And in those two games, he went for 31 and or 41 and 34 uh, fantasy points. Yeah. So, you know, the Dolphins, uh, if they are able to get to him, which is clearly the issue, are they going to protect Jared Goff? Because the Dolphins are going to blitz him a lot. Um, that'll be the key. But he gets Swift back. St. Brown's expected to play. Hawkinson's expected to play. Reynolds is expected to play. The only guy he's missing of the guys that have been there for him when he's had those big games is DJ Chark, but I don't know how much of a loss that is. So in this game, I think it's going to be one of the more high-scoring games. I told you this should have been the game of the week um, for you. Because <laughs> I do think this is going to be a game where we see Tua show up and have a big performance and Goff counter that. And so we're going to get a lot of offense in these two games. In this, and in this I think match. it's fair what you said about comparing the defenses that Goff's played at home, specifically with the commanders. You think about Washington's defense. They've got a really good defensive line. 
and their secondary is kind of a mess. And the Dolphins absolutely have a mess in their secondary. It's whether or not Goff can beat the blitz, because I'm I am certain the Dolphins are going to try and get after him every single snap. When the Patriots did it, Jared Goff looked terrible. If he can beat the blitz, I think St. Brown would be a huge part of that. Hopefully, you've got you know what to do with St. Brown. He's a must-start guy, but when he played Washington, nine catches, 116 yards, and two touchdowns. That's a DFS guy right there. For this and week. he's he's not seeing Xavier Howard. I'd be surprised if he did. Oh, not in the slot. No, yep. no. And Dave, but you have golf 23rd. Uh, yeah, James- I've got a, that's another one that I think I need to really reevaluate. I don't think I'm going to move him. Maybe I would move him into my top 12 because I'm like that just that shows you how shaky the quarterback position is. Is that anybody that you think has a shot to get 25 fantasy points? Boom, they're a top 12 quarterback this week. Okay, when I first took a look at golf this week, my initial thought was the Dolphins pass rush is going to be all over him and he's going to stink. There are there are ways that they can counteract that. Having Swift back is a huge plus. I deserve to give golf another look. Swift or Mostert? I struggle with that one. That's when you know when we ranked Swift yesterday. That's the first place that I went. And I was like, I can't see a situation where if I have DeAndre Swift and Raheem Mostert on my teams, that I'm sitting DeAndre Swift for Raheem Mostert. So you know, that's always, always kind of the way I, I like to look at it, but I wouldn't be surprised if Mostert's better. You know, he's going to get you, more work. Would you co-sign Mostert and non-PPR and Swift and full PPR? No, because I think Swift will score. I mean, you know, it's not like Swift was making a ton of plays in the passing game. He's making a lot of plays with his big playability. And so uh, Mostert last week, four catches, 30 yards. He scored through the air. That's not something you can count on regularly from him. And so who has the more likely chance to get four for 30? It wouldn't be surprised me with Mostert. Adam, have the Dolphins allowed 94 yards or a touchdown to a running back in each of their last 18 games or whatever it is? They have a pretty damn good run defense, except, you know, Dalvin Cook had that that long run. And um, who else before that? Someone had, uh, Brees Hall had a good game. but They did a I good job say, against Najee last week, but I don't know if that's saying anything. Yeah, they, I would say they're kind of inconsistent. But, you know, that... DeAndre Swift, DeAndre Swift's just been a machine. He's been, when he's been on the field, he's been so explosive. He's been one of the best running backs. Um, all right. Uh, so, uh, Monroe St. Brown's a must start. Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle are must starts. Any, any uh, T- yeah, I think TJ Hawkins, we should talk about, but any sleep, like Josh Reynolds, Josh Reynolds, a sleeper or starter sit? I just think that this knee injury has been a problem for him. You know, last week was very frustrating with St. Brown leaving the game early. And granted, the Cowboys defense is, one of the best in football. Their secondary is, is one of the best. And, and you talk about golf struggling with pressure. That was just a nightmare to watch that unfold. Mm-hmm. Uh, so maybe there's a chance for Reynolds to bounce back this week. But I think with St. Brown there and, and Hawkinson there and Swift there, you know, most of his better games have come with somebody missing. Most of it's been Swift. So we'll see what that means for Reynolds. If you've been using him as a third receiver in a three receiver league and they don't have anybody better, go with it. But I'm, I'm kind of done with Reynolds until I see something from him. And Hawkinson, Dave he's i mean it wasn't so bad last week four catches for 48 yards but other than that one game like, yeah he's been pretty so brutal i mean i'll take four catches 48 yards from a streaming tight end but from hawkinson i would i would like a little bit more he's been garbage the dolphins are giving up the seventh most fantasy points two tight ends they're not great in this regard most of that though is andrews what he did Yes. Yeah, Fryermuth also there. had a good game. Um, but Fryermuth, half of Fryermuth's yards came on the final possession of that game last week. Uh, so he, so yeah, it has largely been Mark Andrews. Anyway, I don't, I don't really want to start T.J. Hawkinson. I don't know that people have a choice. I'm starting Dalton Schultz over him. I know you guys hate Dalton Schultz, but I'm starting Schultz. I, I have the two of them in one league, and I'm starting Schultz over Hawkinson. And if Hawkinson does another bad game, I'm dropping him. But yeah, I, I, I have, I have Hawkinson in one league, and I'm starting Taysom Hill over. This is because I feel like if both if both hit to where they they have been the majority of the season, Taysom will be better. Here's the bad: if you take away that huge game that he had against Seattle, Hawkinson's averaging six point two full PPR points per oh. game, which uh, it might make you barf. Dolphins not ranked twelfth in too. most fantasy points allowed to tight ends. They're league worst in catch rate allowed to tight ends. So I think there's an opportunity. If I had to measure up Hawkinson and Schultz, I would say Hawkinson's healthier. And he's got more explosiveness to him. Is he? I think he is. Did you watch Schultz play? He well, cannot I mean, they're both, move very they're, well. They're both dealing with injuries now, so I don't know if you could say one's right. healthier than I, the other. I'm starting the healthier tight end who had a 20% target share last week. 
I, I think that he's got a little bit better of a chance to get more yards and a little bit of a better chance to score. The 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 thing that that would help Hawkinson right now is that Brandon Jones is out safety for the Dolphins. Yeah. So everyone's out. <laughs> yeah, everybody's out so in that secondary. Competing. Except for Howard. Yeah, if their game plan is to have Goff get rid of the ball quickly, Hawkinson will be a good target for him. He'll be second behind St. What do they put Howard on Hawkinson? That would be an interesting concept, but I don't know that they need to, but all right. Have uh, they done anything like that this year? I don't know, but this team doesn't they, have they an outside receiver. Andrew. They did. No, they didn't. Or if they did, it didn't work. This team doesn't have an outside receiver, you know, that they, they, they need to stick Howard on. All right, that's it for this game. Dolphins DST is a low-end starting option, um, and the, the Lions have been absolutely dreadful last two weeks. Well, great matchup for DST's. Patriots and Cowboys had huge games. Two games left. Let's do them five minutes. Chicago at Dallas. Stat of the game number one, a running back has scored. We're all Cowboys at all. <laughs> well, a running back has scored 17 or more PPR fantasy points in five of the last six games against the Bears. Tony Pollard is going to do that. Tony Pollard's never had more than 14 carries. He's going to do that. Tony Pollard is amazing. He's had 12 games, uh, 10 games with, with uh, 12 or more carries. He's averaged like six yards per carry in seven of those 10 games. Something crazy like that. He's amazing. Start Tony Pollard. He's going to be great. He's the start of the week. Um, stat of the you game sounded like the micro machines guy. Yeah, sold separately. Uh, all right, stat of the game number two. The, the Bears' pass defense is not bad. Fourth fewest fantasy points allowed to wide receivers. They haven't been so bad against quarterbacks. Yeah, you can't sit Lamb, but Jamie, you said start all Cowboys. I don't know that. You, are you starting Dak Prescott with confidence? I'm kidding. Um, am I starting Prescott with confidence? No, I, I feel like I want to start Derek Goff over Dak Prescott. Wow. Um, just based on what what the upside would be, the, the, the only way that you sh- you should start Dak Prescott this week is if you feel like, which is a strong feel, that the Cowboys need to get their passing game going for what lies ahead because they're not going to win a Super Bowl winning playing like this. We just don't see teams do that. They have good regular seasons like this. Against the postseason, you're gonna have to make some plays through the air. So they need to get their passing game going at some point. And now the Bears just lost Robert Quinn. The secondary wall has played very, very well. I think that C.D. Lamb and some combination of Gallup, Schultz, Noah Brown, if he plays uh, Pollard out of the backfield, whatever else they want to throw at them, can help Dak Prescott get some decent numbers. But their formula is working right now. And so why go away from it? Whether it was Dak last week or Cooper Rush the five games before that, they don't need to have to throw the ball. You know, So I don't think Dak is going for 303 in this game. That would be very surprising. Could he go for 203? Because they get some red zone touches, touchdowns from him, sure. But I don't know if you can bank on that based on what we've seen from this team. I think I think it's even simpler than that. Not having Zeke is going to make them either lean heavily on Tony Pollard, which is something that they've been kind of hesitant to do, or just let Dak let Dak play and and get his feet further wet. And I, I think I'd go with the latter on that one. I think we'll see Dak Prescott throw it around a little bit more. For what you said, James, they need to get him going. So I, I like Dak quite a bit this week. I think he can come through for a solid 250 and two, if not three. Okay, you like that. And you are you going to keep Justin Fields where you have him? I think 13th. I am at 13. Yeah, I, I really like what I've seen from Fields the last few weeks. And I'm pretty sure the Bears are going to trail in this game. And he, you want to talk about a quarterback that's going to run? Like Jones will get some numbers for sure, but you know Justin Fields is going to keep moving around. Uh, I'm actually encouraged. I know it's a really tough matchup. I get it completely. But I think Justin Fields has a shot to get you 18 fantasy points. Would you guys rather start Darnell Mooney or a Bears running back? Bears running back. Montgomery, Mooney, Herbert. David Montgomery. David Montgomery or... How about um, Najee Harris? Montgomery. Uh, Montgomery. David Montgomery or Michael Carter? Montgomery. Montgomery, but it's close in PPR. Tyler Boyd. Boyd. I'd go Boyd. And I would told you Boyd before the chase injury, too. DJ Moore. 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 David Montgomery or Brandon Cooks? Montgomery. Like Cooks this is the Joe Boo week for Brandon Cooks. I don't know if you mentioned that. I did mention that, yeah. Okay. Per your rec- per your request. Thank you. Um, Mooney is, you know, a low-end starter. The Cowboys are just so good, and they are the best low so far. Starter. He's a bench guy. I, pff, I, 
Well, Dave has him like 37th. So in a three receiver league, he's a low end. Um, Look, I've got him behind Donovan Peoples Jones and Wandale Robinson. I don't know and why George Pickens. Like no, he's behind him. I like DPJ better than Moon. And the Cowboys like, are the best in football, eliminating the big pass play. So that's not good. For sure, anybody. he's just not getting targets. That's the problem. The whole appeal to Darnell Mooney this year was the targets. All right, and uh, we already talked about Dalton Schultz. He's outside the top twelve. It's just the injuries and you know, and that basically. Tennessee at Houston, our last game. Updated stat of the game. Let's go back to 2021. Now the Texans have allowed 20 or more PPR fantasy points to eight running backs in their last 12 games, as updated with Josh Jacobs last week. So you've got a pretty decent chance of 20 or more PPR fantasy points from Derrick Henry. You always do, but you certainly do this week. Um, How about the Titans allowing the third most fantasy points to opposing wide receivers, the most completions of 20-plus air yards, yeah, my only concern, like, okay, this game is so easy. It's just start the running backs, and then Brandon Cooks is. We're not interested in Robert Woods, right? No. So not unless you need a bye week replacement, Brandon Cooks is the guy to to talk about here. And the only thing I don't love is that Brandon Cooks he has the lowest a dot of his career, and Tennessee is a team that gets that's bad against you know the deep ball, and does, Davis Mills doesn't do that. So like, is, he, yeah, go ahead. Does he have the lowest catch rate of his career too? I'm not sure. I'll well, also, I don't know that it's the lowest eight out of his career because it only goes back five years on Pro Football Reference. Uh, I could look on True Media, but you it's, could say very, it's the lowest in the last four years. It's very low. Eight point two is very low for Brandon Cooks as an average depth of target. Eight point two yards. Anyway, I'm just bringing yeah. that up because that's so. That's what could stop him. This is a great matchup. He should get a lot of targets with Nico Collins unlikely to play. But you know, Dave, you can tell me what you think about Brandon Cooks. He's got the lowest catch rate over his last three years. It's not a career low catch rate. It's 59.6%. He's also not getting a slew of targets anymore. He was earlier this season. It's just, it's been a really bad scene for him. And I think defenses know that he's the guy to take away when the Texans put the ball in the air. I don't think Davis Mills has particularly played great all year, but he did play pretty well last week. And I kind of want to give Mills the benefit of the doubt, given the matchup. But I've had Cooks on a couple of my teams this year. Everybody knows I traded for him in one league. I'm I'm nervous to start him, man. I, I know that he's got this great matchup. He should come through. This should be a six-catch, 95-yard, one-touchdown game for Brandon Cooks. And if it's not, I'm done with him. But it's he's been so ineffective compared to previous years, and that's why I'm nervous. Okay, Jamie, are you nervous about Brandon Cooks, or is he an easy start for you? He's a start for me. Not an easy start, but he's a start for me. I mean, you know, Dave laid it out. I, I just think be a little bit more positive <laughs> without Nico Collins on the field and and the chance that they're uh, most likely chasing points this week. So uh, this will be this will be the Brandon Cooks game you've been waiting for for the last couple weeks. Happily starting him over Darnell Mooney, uh, starting him over Donovan Peoples Jones. It's when I get to Jerry Judy, George Pickens, Wandale. That's when I get a little nervous about Cooks. Yeah, I'd start him over all those guys. All right. And last thing, Robert Woods, 77% rostered as of yesterday. He's been pretty bad. One game with more than 39 yards. But this is a team that's given up 95 or more yards to a wide receiver in five of six games. And they've all been outside wide receivers. And that's typically where Robert Woods plays. He's mostly on the outside. But they've been Pittman, Sutton, Mike Williams, Devontae Adams, and there's Marvin Jones in there. So, I don't know. DFS dart throw or... Well, know. you have you have the quarterback situation at play here because Ryan Tannehill That's is still limited, yeah. you know. So if it's Malik Willis, it's a wild card because yeah. who knows how things will go there. But my guess would be is you're getting the Marcus Mariota treatment. You're probably getting 14, 15 pass attempts if it's if it's Malik. You might get that with Tannehill anyway, you know. So uh, under twenty pass attempts would probably be the the expectation in this game, unless the Texans somehow surprise the Titans and are playing with the lead. So it's hard to trust anybody aside from Derrick Henry. Take a look at the Titans DST. They're available in about 40% of leagues. They've had three good games in a row, and every DST that's faced Houston has done well this year. That's it for today's show. We will talk to you on Saturday with the mailbag. It's actually going to be recorded Friday afternoon, as you know. Oh, special guest today. We have Will Brinson coming on uh, to give a little fantasy cops. in five. We're giving him five-minute limit. Uh, fantasy cops with Will Brinson and, of course, all your emails, your Apple podcast questions. Thanks to Dave. Thanks to Jamie. Zach Brook, our producer today. Uh, I'm Adam, and... Good luck in week eight. See ya.